I beat this car in a race. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage, and behind me is a 2019 Nissan Versa SV. Nissan says Versa stands for Versatile Space, so let's find out exactly what that means in this week's episode. So if you're looking for a car that gets you from A to B and gets good gas mileage, it's pretty much safe and very reliable, then look no further. You need to stop watching this video right here because the Nissan Versa is just that. All right, that's the Nissan Versa review. All right, see you guys next week. I'm just kidding, but in a sense that this is actually my least favorite car like ever, probably behind the Prius. So that's saying a lot. If you guys know me, the Prius is my go-to target. Like that is the, that triggers me right there, the Prius. So this is the second generation of the Versa. It was available from 2012 all the way to 2019. So if you see these running around and they look the same as they always have, that's because Nissan hasn't really changed them much. What makes this so great is that for about $16,000 and on, even cheaper on the used car market, you can get one of these brand new, fully loaded, warranty, all of that good stuff. And what do you get? You get a car, a whole car, guys. One whole car. I'm trying to find an adjective to describe this Versa right now, but I'm really, there really isn't anything. It's just a car. Simple as that. 15 inch wheels are something that you used to see back in the day quite a bit. That used to be like a common size for economy cars. And guess what? Economy car, 15 inch wheels. So let's talk about the front end for a little bit. Not a whole lot to talk about. If I were to sketch a car and just draw like a car, this is probably what I would draw. It would just be the outline of a car, like of that blob shape and then wheels. And this would be the Nissan Versa. So you can see they tried to do something cool with the headlights. They tried to do something with the Nissan grill that they have on all the other cars. But for some reason, all together, it just comes together as a car. That's it. You guys know fake vents bother me. But what's even worse than fake vents or ducts? It's when you just like put a plug in them. Like this is just straight up a cap. Like they're like, you know, this car isn't fast. It doesn't need to redirect air to the brake calipers or anything like that. So let's just plug this hole. So it's got this SV badge, which stands for super value. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Now this one's pretty interesting to me. Normally on the rear end of cars, you've got a trunk release back here so you can just push buttons and pop it open. The Versa doesn't have that. You see this little hole right here? It's a standard keyhole. So you've got to grab your key, which I placed in one of these pockets. You grab your key and you've got to place it in here. Old school, right? So for those of you that have never seen one of these, it's that manual lock, you know, that's how these work. But just to make things better, Nissan does give you the option to hold this and it pops. So there is some use to this key fob with this traditional key thing that Nissan still gives out, but that's what you get for $16,000. And while we're back here, let me go ahead and show you guys what kind of trunk we're looking at. Surprisingly, this is actually a good bit of room. And I'll give you guys a closer look here in a little bit. Hopefully the cops don't show up. But there's a good bit of space. Good bit of space in here. So good job, Nissan. If you guys wanted to, I'm pretty sure you could upgrade this to a Nissan GTR rear spoiler of some sort. Make it a little bit more edgy. You know, honestly, this thing could look really good with some nice wheels and a body kit on there. Before I pop the hood, and show you guys what we're working with under this beast of a car right here. Let me just say, this is one of the slowest cars I have ever driven in my entire life. The slowest. Painfully slow. So slow, I beat this car in a race. Nissan couldn't even be bothered to put a full-size one of these in here. So for the discounted price, you get a discounted hood strut. Some numbers for you guys. Under the hood, you get a 1.6 liter four cylinder that has 109 horsepower, 107 foot pounds of torque. Comes with a CVT. It is front wheel drive and does zero to 60 in 9.8 seconds. I'm gonna say that again. Zero to 60 in 9.8 seconds. Do you know what you can do in 9.8 seconds? But I gotta say the one good thing about a car this simple is working on it. I mean, it's like this car is still from 2005, 2006. There's not a whole lot in here that a garage mechanic can't just work on. And I love that about it. You know, it's a nice little bonus to having a car of this caliber. The best part is it only weighs about 2,500 pounds, so it really doesn't need a lot of power, but it would just be nice to have a little bit more. 
This car also gets 31 city and 39 highway. And let's show you guys the back seats. There's a good bit of room. This actually is one of the largest back seats of all the economy cars. So I will now demonstrate getting in here like a normal person. And as you can see, 5'9", plenty of room back here. I'm actually pretty comfortable. These cloth seats, even though they're just cloth and basic, they feel pretty good. And I've got plenty of leg room. So this is what you're working with in these back seats. Pretty nice, no rear vents, no climate controls, no nothing, no USBs, no aux, just a back seat. What more can you ask for? These rear sheets do also fold 60-40. Also, you only get one little back seat storage. There's not a whole lot to talk about on the interior. For the SV, you really don't get much. You get cloth seats, six-way driver seats, an armrest, and a remote trunk. That's it. That's about all you get in an SV. Your floor mats also say Versa, in case you forget. When you get in this interior, it does scream super value, but you're quickly reminded that it's not too terrible in here because you've got a touch screen. You've got this cool upgraded infotainment system, and it's not state of the art or anything like that, but it'll get the job done. You also get this armrest, which is nice, but guess who doesn't get an armrest? The passenger, so uh, sucks for them, sucks to suck. You also do get climate control, but it's super ancient. I'll show you guys that in a moment. And then on the steering wheel, you've got cruise control, you've got your volume or your stereo controls, you've got controls over here for your side mirrors. That's about it, no sunroof. You get these old school cabin lights and that's, that's about it. That's about it. Yep, super value. It's got a, like I said, it, it does have the things you need. It's got an aux and a USB. And then I wanna show you guys something that throws back to like the times before we had automatic climate control and dual climate control and all of those things and seats that know when your butt's at the right temperature and your seats need to be cooled and all that stuff, all the crazy technology we got now. It makes you forget about that because you don't have any in here and you don't really need it. We've kind of come so far that we expect all these things from a vehicle. Check that out. Yep, Bluetooth. Like I said, all that you need. Look at this. A lot of you guys that were around in the 90s remember when you had to learn how to set your um, defogging in your car. So you have to set this intake lever, set these controls and dials, do all this. So you've got this little toggle, which you don't even have on most cars nowadays, but that determines if you bring in air from the outside or if you're just recirculating air. So that's pretty cool, but it's a throwback to back in the 90s when you had to set your climate controls manually. Whenever you look up shift knob in a dictionary, this is like the most generic shifter ever. It's got buttons on there and stuff. It's just the most basic shifter in the history of shifters. You do get cup holders and two other cup holders up front. Yep, you see right there? It tops out at 140. Let me know if you guys hit that. And if you're worried if the Versa is a chick magnet or not, don't worry, it totally is. I got some good lines for you guys. And trust me, they work every time. I wouldn't steer you guys wrong. You pull up and you say, do you believe in love at first sight? Or should I drive around the block one more time? Or how about, I need some coolant because you've got my engine overheating. Yeah. I'm just letting you guys and gals know that it's not about the kind of car that you drive. No matter what it is you drive, you can make magic happen anywhere, anytime. You just gotta have the right game, man. The right game. If you guys got any more of them car pickup lines or automotive pickup lines, drop them down in the comment section below because uh, asking for a friend that could use some more of them. A couple more cars like this, the Cruise, the Sonic, the Spark, just A to B cars. That's all they are. Nothing wrong with them at all. Pedal to the floor. There isn't really a whole lot to say about the Versa. It's pretty much what you think about when you get a rental car, which is funny enough, that's actually what this is. But uh, it's not really anything. It's, it's the most basic generic form of a car that you can think of. And the best way to describe it would be like, it's gutless, like it, it has no spirit. It just, it's just here to be a car. I certainly don't hate it. You know, there's their worst cars and Nissan's a great company, great brand. They 
make awesome cars. This isn't exactly one of their greatest hits, but if you think about it as they're taking, like let's say an Ultima Maxima, and then they're stripping away the, th the nice things, the things that you absolutely, you know, are luxury. They're the creature comforts, the things that we take for granted nowadays in 2019. But you take away those things and then you leave the things that we absolutely need. You need air conditioning, got it. You need a solid transmission, this is okay, got that. You need infotainment system, got that. Power windows, got that. That's really all you really need. You know, you can lock and unlock the doors from the uh, key fob. Nissan's not really trying to do a whole lot with this car. And, you know, can you really blame them? No. Do you understand why this is a budget car? Yes. Do they do a good job with making it a budget car? Yes. And do you feel like you're missing out on certain things? Depends what kind of person you are. Now, I'm not using the terms budget and basic in a negative way, but this is exactly what this is. There's no frills, there's nothing fancy. I mean, this cloth seats, they're comfortable enough for a road trip. They're not gonna be self-massaging or do anything nice to you, you know? This isn't gonna be a complete full body massage riding around in one of these. But at the same time, is that a bad thing? Meh. Depends. That's the good thing about the market is there are many different types of consumers and this fits for a certain market, but it might not fit for all markets. And this is definitely not a one size fits all kind of car, but this is a car that checks all the boxes of what a car is supposed to do for you. It gets that right. It's not my kind of car. This is not what I'm looking for when I purchase a vehicle. But for $16,000, all said and done, brand new, and being able to find one of these on the used car market for three, dollars $4,000 less, that's basically still brand new. I mean, if you shop and think with your wallet, then hey, it's a great deal. If you're not as a, much of a bargain hunter as I am, and you like the creature comforts, and you're probably not gonna want something like this. As you'd imagine, there's not a whole lot of safety features. You don't really get a whole lot. You've got side mirrors and you better know how to use them because this car is not gonna monitor those blind spots for you. Yeah, that's first world problems, right? No blind spot monitoring. You gotta actually do that for yourself and learn how to look over and check your blind spots. Oh, to think. This is to get you from A to B, sometimes C, and then back to A and B with great fuel economy, relatively good safety ratings, and no thrills in between. You know, you wanna drive past the police without being stopped. This is what this car is. This car is what I would say a lot of people should get their kids as like a first car. The people that are fortunate enough to be driving around in like a Range Rover, to be learning how to take their driving tests and all that stuff, you know, this is what these kids need to be driving around. It builds character, you know? Another thing with this is it's so slow that you literally, when a light is turning yellow, like don't even try to make that light. Like you just won't make the light at all. Give up, just stop, just don't do it, or you could die. There's a lot of body roll and it bounces all over the place, but it's kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie to you, you know, it's, you know that this car is not great handling, which kind of scares you, but in a good way, because if you're brave enough to try, oh yeah, full pucker all day. Like I said, you can kind of whip it around and it just body rolls, but it's not, it's not gonna do anything that you didn't tell it to do. It's a hundred and something horsepower, I mean. You have to either be driving while distracted or intoxicated in order to get this thing in a bad situation. You know how hard that is? Thank you guys for checking out yet another episode of LJ's Garage. Unfortunately, not all the cars we do can be exciting, so we have to include a little bit of everything. We've got SUVs, trucks, cars, everything that you can imagine. So this unfortunately isn't a high performance machine, but thank you guys for checking out yet another episode. Be sure to hit that like button, the subscribe button, and if you're a returning subscriber, hit that bell notification for whenever I post new videos, you can be the first to check them out. Thank you guys yet again.